Walt, tell us a little bit about you, your organization, and how you're equipping youth workers. Okay. I was a youth worker for many, many years, and in the late 1980s, that's how old I am, I had a group of parents come to me, and they said, help us understand our teens better. So uh, I, I, with hesitation and great fear, took that challenge, and what grew out of that was uh, some great connections between parents and their teens and a whole ministry, the Center for Parent Youth Understanding, which I've been doing for 22 years. So we study culture and then work to help you understand culture and your parents. And you do different seminars. You'll travel and you go to churches yeah. and you'll help equip parents, and it's fantastic. And so out of that ministry was birthed this new idea with the um, growth of teens and technology. Tell us a little bit about this website, digitalkidsinitiative.com, and how youth workers can interact with it. Okay. Uh, the whole Digital Kids Initiative here uh, came out of, as we, as we track with cultural trends, we will find trends that need uh, some specific, intense uh, understanding and response from. So we have a, a sexual integrity initiative. We have a college transition initiative you know, to help you transition uh, students to college well. And uh, we were getting so many questions about technology, mostly from parents, you know, should my kids be on Facebook? A lot of, uh, you know, parameters is what they wanted. And we decided not only do we need to answer that, but we need to take people deep mm -hmm. and equip youth workers and parents uh, to think theoretically, think theologically, think experientially, bring all that together and think about technology and how to use that in the right way. Um, my, my sense is that if Jesus truly is to be the Lord of every square inch of our lives, then he has to be Lord over our use of technology as well. And most of us just dive right into it without thinking about what we're doing, how we're doing it, and where this might lead. So we're trying to think ahead and instead of diving into it, wade into it and, and do this responsibly. So out of that, after we got a grant uh, to study this, came this Digital Kids Initiative, which has yielded a lot of material that everything on this website is free. And it's here for you as youth workers, and it's here for you to pass on to your parents as well. I know that you, you, one of the examples you mentioned was how much time should our students be spending on Facebook. But I can imagine that another big conversation parents are having with their teens are um, how old should they be to, yep. to, you know, to get a cell phone. And then once they have that cell phone, are they allowed to text? How much right. texting? Right. Uh, how do you answer some of these questions? Well, now that, quest that question there is, you know, you've got eight, nine, ten-year-old kids before they come into your ministry who have been walking with handhelds for years with 24-7 internet access, if they don't find it, it's going to find them. So we, you know, a lot of warnings about that and, and good use and best practices. So what parents can do and what you can do with your parents when they have these questions, if you scroll down on the right to downloads there, where you are, and just hit that, um, and then you can scroll through this page, you'll see that right there there's a, just a handful of handouts, things like a Parent's Guide to Cyberbullying, a thing on text acronyms uh, over there on the right in the red, that family, go ahead and click on that once. Right. Uh, this family digital covenant of conduct, these are all downloads, they're free. You can print out as many as you want, you can send them on to people. This one here is basically one page where we worked very hard to find some of the best parameters that parents need and that students will benefit from and we've put together a contract. You can use it as is, or you can just take it and pirate it and make it what you want. But at least gives parents a starting point. And so, again, all these things, you know, just over the course of, of, of time, once a week, once a month, forward these PDFs on to parents or print them out and, uh, and hand them to, to them when you see them. That's just one example there. This is an incredible way to not just um, benefit the teens, but also help equip your parents as oh, yeah. they're parenting at home with, right. with the teens. I love this because this, co this covenant, as you mentioned, I love this, is a discussion starter. Yeah. You know, it's not going to be the end all. It's not going to cover all the bases. But let's start the conversation here. And some of these, they're just fantastic. I think even just something as simple as I won't download an app without permission. Yeah. You know, a lot of times we think that's, that's just a no-brainer, but you're saying let's be even cautious about those things. Oh, yeah. Well, most parents are in the dark. You know that. I mean, that's why those parents came to me in the first place, you know, some 20-some years ago and uh, just asked about the culture. And so part of what you can do in your role as a secondary influence in the lives of those kids is support those primary nurturers and give them information. Again, most of them are clueless out in the dark. So you raise their awareness. And what we found is, uh, and this is one of the great things about working with youth workers through CPYU, is we found that you can be a hero to parents 
because, again, most of them don't know. And when you sort of peel the curtain back, yeah, every now and then it backfires. Parents say, I didn't want to know that. Uh, but you can just raise their awareness and really work to equip them with all these different things. And, and this is just one aspect, this Digital Kids Initiative, of, uh, of what we do at CPYU. So. And my guess is, I'm just kind of making an assumption here, but if a youth worker to actually spend time walking through this resource too, they might even be more aware of how they're using their device in front of teens. Right. So well, they're already practicing you know, safe parameters, but they're almost modeling for the teen what's a safe um, behavior. Is that, is that oh true? Oh, yeah. And, and that's, a great, that's a great point, a great question. And let me just address that. Uh, that is huge because the, the example that we give to students as we model how we use these things is going to shape them. Again, most of their parents have not thought about these things Christianly and biblically. And so what we want to do in terms of discipling and nurturing young people is uh, not only talk with them about how to think about this, but train them by modeling it. And so, uh, look, let's just be honest. I, I, one of the things I say to youth workers all the time is this. And if you read the blog, you'll know I, I, I do this over and over and over again. And I'm from Pennsylvania, and we've had a big news story there in the last year yeah. about these things. And that is this, that we are all, because our, of our sinful and broken nature, just one bad decision away from being a headline. Yeah. Just one bad decision away from being a headline. Now, that shouldn't be the thing that motivates us to do right. Mm -hmm. There's more that motivates us to do right. But we have to know good practices. How can I, as a youth worker, model... Um, uh, disciplined use, godly use, biblically informed use of social media in a way that's not only healthy for me and, and glorifying to God, but will help uh, my students learn to do the same.